Yep, below the roof, on the wall. Um, it can be indoors, outdoors. And is this a high voltage DC or is this for 48 volts? If you want it to stack multiple units or parallel connect multiple yes. units, what's, what's the highest capacity we could reach for a single inverter? Uh, it integrates with our app seamlessly. You have one app, one ECU, one controller. All the data information is controlled on one site. So the smarter way to go solar. Hey everyone, Joe Ordi here for Solar Surge, and today we're coming to you from InterSolar North America, which is the big solar conference they do every year here in San Diego. Uh, this morning I'm joined by Teddy Hodges from AP Systems, and we're looking at the new AP Storage uh, battery inverter solution. So Teddy, thanks for taking time to chat with us. Yeah, I appreciate it, thanks for being here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're so we're here in Southern California now. As you know, like everything in California now, solar, it's all going to battery storage in addition to solar. So tell us about the AP systems or the AP storage solution. What, what are we looking at here? How does it work? Awesome. What, what we have here is a great residential battery backup system. We have our 11.4 PCS that is uh, AC coupled, and we'll get into that. But we've paired it with a 10 point uh, zero kilowatt hour battery and it's a stackable unit up to 16 units so pretty large system it can incorporate right now with an ac coupled system what we have is we have it paired with our micro inverters our flagship ds3 models and they come in with a string into directly into the ports here on the ac ports um, and so then we direct feed ac in ac out and our conversion happens just between the battery and the inverter pcs right here um, it's a little bit easier, it's lower voltage, and it's a better solution for most homeowners. So. Okay. So again, you know, we, we talk about different types of batteries. We talk about AC coupled versus DC coupled. Yeah. You know, DC coupled means you're, you're typically bringing high voltage DC from the roof all the way down to the battery inverter. That's In this case, if you, let's say you already have micro inverters on your rooftop, so you've got AC coming down to ground level, then all of this can just be hooked up at below the roof, right? Yeah, below the roof, on the wall. Um, it can be indoors, outdoors. Um, we do have a very detailed installation guide that gives you all the parameters on how, where, and what to install this, if it's indoors or outdoors. Uh, and being lower voltage, we find it a lot safer for the homeowner to interact with and the installer to actually install it. Um, having the potential of 600 volts on a DC system, you do have that potential of having that higher voltage. So with the strictly AC coupled, we find it a better solution for most people. Sure, sure. Well, especially those are if you're going to be retrofitting solar or retrofitting storage yes. onto a home that already has solar. The nice thing about this is all this can be done at ground level without having to, to rewire the roof or potentially void the warranty on work that's already been done on the rooftop. Yeah, and that's a good point. Is you can actually add this to any solar system if you have solar or you don't have solar. You can put this directly on your house without any solar or photovoltaic. So you can add this in with any AC coupled system, uh, solar or not. So it's a good, great solution. Okay, yes. let's talk specs for a little bit then. Yeah. You said in terms of power output, it's 11.4 11, 11 kilowatts? That's correct, and that's direct AC power. So there's no worry about confusion. Some of these companies list their product at a higher PV rating. We don't, we go straight conversion. You're gonna get 11.4 kW out of it because that's what it's listed at, that's what it's rated at. So we try to name it exactly what you're gonna receive. So there's no confusion there. So. Great. Now tell me about in terms of in terms of switching. Does this does it typically have its own sort of transfer switch or hub, or is this used typically with a critical loads like a critical loads panel that the installer would put in? So we love when uh, we can actually have a backup system that works. So we prefer having just critical loads or crucial loads that you want on demand or on power always. When it does fall off the grid, it does have a grid forming load side. So it'll all be grid tied. Your solar will still work when it goes off grid in those situations on those grid outages. Um, and it does it all automatically. You won't even see the lights flicker when this actually PCS kicks into effect. So it's a quick transition um, and it's very hard to recognize when you're off grid. You'll get a little alert on your phone, on your monitoring app saying, hey, you went off grid. Okay. Hey, Teddy, let, let's talk about battery compatibility now. Yeah. Now, I know we've had this here depicted with the AP storage battery, but I understand this works with other batteries as well, right? That's correct. There's a list of about 10 batteries it's compatible with. We, we're pretty battery agnostic. That means we can work with pretty much any battery makeup. There are some settings we do have to change to some parameters, but we have the one listed battery we would like to use, and that's the one we provide with the system. It's also UL9540 listed with it, so it's highly compatible for those certain jurisdictions that you have to have that compatibility listed on the UL. 
So. Okay, so for your battery, let's, let's just go to the specs on your battery. You, yeah. said, you said it's 10 kilowatt hours of usable storage? That's correct, yeah. Okay. So it's a lithium iron phosphate, so you can actually drain it quite low and refill it. There are certain parameters and temperatures we'd like to keep it within. So when you take that under consideration for installation practices and purposes, and then also programming. Um, there are three different modes you can actually do with our inverter and battery setup like most. You have your self-consumption, you have your emergency storage, and then you have your time of use or grid settings. And those are all done in programming and settings. So. Okay. In, in terms of operating environment, is this designed for indoor use, outdoor use, or, or, or both? Both, yeah. So um, both, obviously, I prefer to install on the interior of a garage, sub-basement, uh, utility room. It just keeps it out of the elements. I think it'll prolong it, but you can put it outside. It still works all the way from negative 40 to 165 ambient air temperature. It does have a self-regulating heating element in it, so it actually performs really well outside. So. Excellent, so it'll go all the way down to negative 40 ambient temperature. Yes, that's correct. With, with the internal heaters. That's correct. Great, great. So b b besides the AP storage brand battery, what are, what are some of the other brands that, that the folks might be familiar with out there that compare with your battery inverter? Yeah, so I'd have to look at a full data sheet. I know that there's several out there that are compatible. Um, I do know it's online in our data sheet profile where we have the suspected, uh, I think there's 10 or 15 of them on that list of usable battery types that will fit in with the standard programming regulations from our tech support, so. And is this a high voltage DC or is this for 48 volt system? This is a low voltage DC. So um, it actually is a 51 volt system. Uh, okay. So it works like a 48 volt battery technically, but yeah, the highest, the highest charge it'll hit is a 51, so. Great. Great. And then in terms of maximum storage capacity, if you wanted to stack multiple units or parallel connect multiple yes. units, what's what's the highest capacity we could reach for a single inverter? Uh, 16 units, so 160 kW on that usage. So quite large. Got it. Yeah. All right, Teddy. Well, is there anything else that the audience should know about the AP storage solution or, or battery compatibility with the system? It's a great, easy installation. Um, within a couple hours, you can actually have a full backup system on your property. Uh, it integrates with our app seamlessly. You have one app, one ECU, one controller. All the data information is controlled on one site. So that's where I've seen the advantage of a lot of these systems where you're not integrating two or three different monitoring apps and it's very streamlined. Uh, the user interface is very easy. So. Yeah, I think that's what we're seeing too. And I think for, for consistency of user experience, being able to have one provider for all of your major components, your inverter, your battery, your micro inverters, you know, whatever else, that way you have one place to go control monitor the system. Yeah. So I think that's the way it's going. Awesome. Um, all right. Well, folks, that pretty much wraps it for today's presentation. Again, just a quick chat with Teddy Hodges here. We're looking at the AP storage solutions from AP Systems. Uh, of course, folks, if you're getting good value from the videos that you watch on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, and also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We, we want to get that thing over 100,000 subscribers this year. Uh, and of course, the reason that we're at InterSolar is to make sure that all of you out there can stay up to date with all the latest solar industry and product information. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you stay up to date. You won't miss anything. Uh, but that pretty much does it for today. Teddy, I thank awesome. you for Appreciate spending it. time you. with us. Uh, and as always, I'm Joe Wardy here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.